Farouk Jiwa is a Kenyan capitalist with a conscience. He is finding a way to revitalize Kenya's exploited honey industry, make some money for himself, and help the rural poor. Here's his story. For decades, it's been a long, hard road for beekeepers in Kenya. With little support from the Ministry of Agriculture and antiquated technology, the country's locally produced honey was barely noticeable on supermarket shelves. In the last two years, thanks to green entrepreneur Farouk Jiwa, Kenyan beekeepers have begun to claim their rightful share of the market. But even Farouk hasn't been involved in beekeeping for that long. He simply saw a business opportunity. Why honey? Why not honey? Um, I think it's, it's one of the sectors in agriculture that's been ignored for a very long time in Kenya. Coffee was very well developed, so was cotton, um, so was tea. But unfortunately, for some reason, honey production was never really developed in, in Kenya as it should have been. There was no training provided and perhaps most importantly, no market support. With the help of three local investors, Farouk started Honey Care Africa. His aim is to provide a source of sustainable income through beekeeping to the many subsistence farmers across Kenya. However, Honey Care Africa had to overcome one major obstacle. Traditional hives were inaccessible to women. The traditional log hive is normally placed up in the tree about 25 or 30 feet off the ground. And because of that, it was only men who were, who were doing beekeeping in, in Kenya before. Yet in the Kitui district, southeast of Nairobi, almost half the beekeepers are now women. What has been in interesting about Kitui specifically is by taking the hive off the trees and bringing them close to the ground, we've broken the hegemony of the men who are able to go up and, and control this, this, this beekeeping sector. We've intentionally brought the hive to the ground level, placed it reasonably close to the home. In Kitui district, for example, we have about 47% of our farmers are now women and are able to use this money to pay for the school fees, to run the family, and, you know, open savings accounts as well. No. All from honey? All from honey. These are my friends. Because I know they are my friends. They are making something I get money from. I don't fear them. Yeah. This new ground level hive has changed the face of Kenyan beekeeping. It's known as the Langstroth hive. There are two fundamental principles of the Langstroth hive. The first one is you have recyclable combs. There are combs that where the bees are able to go in, put the honey in there, you're able to remove the honey without damaging the combs, which allows every harvest for you to get more and more honey coming through without the bees having to rebuild the combs. And secondly, what you try to do also is separate where the bees live from where they're storing the honey. The secret behind an effective Langstroth beehive is the starter comb, which is made from natural beeswax. A lot of people like to think of this comb starter as being the wallpaper of a beehive. You need to have the, the wonderful design and the wonderful smell in order to make sure that the bees are attracted to it. It's one thing to attract the bees, but the farmers need to be attracted first. How does it work for a farmer who wants to join the scheme? What we would normally do is, we'll probably go out to the area where the, where the farmer came from, go out and do a demonstration. If the community are willing to get involved in beekeeping, we would then lobby on their behalf through a non-governmental organization to provide the farmers with loans so they can acquire beehives. We then provide training to the farmers, um, extension service wherever required, and then most importantly, a guaranteed market for them. How do you help the beekeepers with a guaranteed market? We sign contracts with them for long-term durations, three years, five years, sometimes even ten years, guaranteeing to buy whatever honey they're going to produce from them. We have a simple policy at Honey Care, it's called Money for Honey. And that policy basically means that we make cash payments on the spot to every single farmer, every single time. On an annual basis, Kenya's beekeepers now earn between $220 and $400 from an average of four hives. With each of these hives containing a colony of up to 80,000 worker bees, Farouk is able to purchase honey from the farmers every three months. We go out with a little pickup, uh, a little tent with shade netting on, on four sides, and the farmers are told on a particular day will be at a particular village. We uh, get all the boxes of honey together, each farmer brings in his or her box of honey, it's weighed, it's then extracted on the spot using a manual centrifuge machine, and the empty box is weighed. The difference in weight is the weight of the honey. Before the farmer is paid, Honey Care Africa deducts an amount that is then paid back to the NGO against the original loan for the hive. Generally, the farmer would get about 75% of the value of his honey back um, in, in cash, and 25% is deducted mandatorily and given back to the NGO. And in terms of a loan default mechanism, this is probably the best way of doing it. Rather than giving the farmer the 100% and then leaving it for him or her to decide whether she, he or she is going to pay back or not, we deduct at the point of payment. 
By using this method, beekeepers are usually able to pay off their loan within one year. From then on, every kilogram of honey produced makes a profit. And of course, the environment is profiting as well. With a sustainable income from honey, communities no longer need to sell as much charcoal. More trees are saved, and with that, more bees. We specifically focus on the subspecies that, that exist in particular regions and never move bees around within, within the, the country. This probably is quite important in terms of conserving biodiversity as well because as more and more trees are cut down and as more and more vegetation disappears, the local pollinators are being displaced as well. In the long run, this will have a tremendously positive effect on Kenya's honey production. For Farouk and Honey Care Africa, there are many more shelves to fill. What we're trying to do now is really develop a mass market for the honey. So take it away from the suburbs and, and the important cities in Nairobi and make it available at every kiosk and every corner in, 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 in the country. The idea here is we've experimented with a model. We, we think we're seeing some good results and, and, and some success. We'd be delighted to work with anybody who'd want to replicate this in any other African country. And Brooks also going to Mexico to see how they have revitalized their coffee industry.